Well, this, do I start with uh, sup? <laughs> sup? I, I think we can. I... <laughs> no. I guess first, how we know each other, just so that people have an idea of the history here. Hi, I'm Amy Scheidegger Dukos. I am the head of Rock and Roll Creative, and this is George Nelson. <laughs> George, what's up? How do we tell the folks how we know each other? Oh, man. I I don't want to think about the amount of years because that'll make me, it'll make my mind explode. It already exploded. Oh, Last yeah. time we talked is when we, we, we yeah. figured out how long we've known each other, right? Yeah, it exploded and it assembled and, you know, maybe it won't explode this time. I have known Amy for 20 years. Okay, still good. 20 years, that's <laughs> crazy. Did they even have YouTube back then? I, I mean, I we, were on, we were on like AIM. Like that's how we communicated back in college, right? Everybody who's watching this is going to be like, okay, boomer. Um, <laughs> so I, I remember clearly meeting Amy. It was in design, a foundations class. Yep. Uh, design uh, course in art school at East Carolina University, and we've we've known each other since. You know, we've uh, there's so many things that's happened in that time. I mean, uh, people raise like full fledged adults in 20 years. So yeah, we have not done that. Stories. But that first foundations class where we had to paint swatches with gouache paint. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And we really tried to perfect those like exacto knife skills. Oh mm. I, I had so many problems with that, but uh, <laughs> but anyways, we we both uh, majored in painting and drawing, and uh, we've utilized those skills in some shape or form since. Um, Amy, of course, is full time artist among many 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 other things. Um, and I have um, been working in graphics production, but I've always had this uh, wanting to do an animation since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, ECU didn't have an animation program. Um, if you're watching ECU, maybe you should. I, just, I mean, just saying. <laughs> they might now. I don't know. We haven't. Neither one of us yeah. has looked that up. Uh, I don't know anybody at ECU uh, currently. Uh, in the program, but oh, there's Scott um, Eagle. The Scott's still there. Hi, Scott. Um, hi, Scott. Um, <laughs> yeah, Scott, let me know if there's an animation department. Maybe I'll just come back and take that course. Yeah, I still have time to learn. Um, but through the pandemic, I had this great opportunity of um, entering this one film festival that was calling for uh, three minute short films and. It was a super tight deadline, uh, 25 days. And uh, if you know anything about George, I'm always like, is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. Let's, let's just do that. And it was possible, uh, but I, I went, you know, a little bit, a little on the, on the crazy side. I went a couple of days without much sleep because it's, it's quite an ordeal uh, to take on. But... But I loved it. It was something that I've always wanted to do. And yeah. to be fair, in art school, that's how you operated. <laughs> On yeah. very little sleep. Very mm -hmm. little sleep. We would yeah, walk into the studio at like <laughs> 8, 9 a.m. Georgie there would be asleep on the couch. <laughs> Thank God for that couch, yeah. At least a good 50% of the time I was like asleep on that couch. Mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think after a while, I finally was like, like, I, you know, I would pat the couch and be like, oh, there's like paint particles. <laughs> this. So, I'm like, yeah, that's just, probably, yeah, probably all up in my lungs. Um, but anyways, uh, I actually talked, uh, chatted with a couple people uh, that are getting into animation recently. And I, I was telling them that, like, sometimes it's a very thankless job. It is, it's so many long hours of work just to make something move the, the slightest yeah. amount. Um, but it's, but it's really rewarding. Um, and so I, I got a chance to do that. I made this quick short film 
called With Me, uh, featuring, featuring a character that I had designed almost 10 years ago. Um, and so, you know, I was ready to go. At least I had that idea that I wanted to feature that dog character, Rocky. And, um, and I, I was very fortunate that it went on to um, get some recognition when, when a couple small awards and get featured in some festivals and yeah it uh it, it, yeah thank you it, um it very much was uh like an, another chapter for me creatively and um i knew that i wanted to continue with that um i wanted to make something that i didn't have such a short limited 25 day time span um and so i started by writing this next piece called another pack and uh, I knew that I would definitely uh, need more help with it uh, because A, it's twice the length and B, it was going to be more ambitious in terms of the, the number of characters, the locations, the, the, the quality of the piece. Mm -hmm. um, and Amy, being Amy, <laughs> she reached out to me. Yes. Fr I didn't know that you were working on another animation. I just because of my 2021 collaborations, obviously you were high up on that list of people that I wanted to reconnect with. Um, I should say, you know, we've been friends for 20 years, but we've gone a span of, I don't know, a year-ish without talking to each other. We already live like thousands of miles apart and have for, for many, many years at this point, but uh you were you were one of the artists that i knew was probably working on something uh, because a lot of these collaborations are starting from scratch i wanted some collaborations that were just like me tagging on uh which is yeah. the case here like you definitely already had this going on i'm interested though how 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 much time do you have for this one not the not the 25 days but like how long did you have yeah it was great um i think honestly like amy is amazing she you know she did not know specifically that i was working on another project of this caliber um but she probably had force sensitivity i'm sure that's exactly what it was like you know there's there's some movement in um she reached out to me and um and i told her that hey this is what i'm currently working on would you be interested um and at that time, I had already created the animatic for this short film uh, with with the storyline and uh, most of the things in place. And I had spent probably uh, off and on, I probably spent already four months on that. Wow. Um, yeah, just with the writing, just with the, the very loose uh, brush strokes of what would become uh, what it currently is. Right. And... I've got probably a remaining two months left. <laughs> um, so it's, as I said, it's a long process. It's like, great. I worked on this half a year for, you know, five, six minutes of, mm -hmm. of, of footage. Um, but she came at this great time because I created this pack of dogs that needed to be in the film. And even though they were only in there for one shot, um, I knew that they had to, you know, have at least some thought and care put into them. And that's where you came in, Amy, and we're like, okay, cool, character design, yeah. you know, animation. You know, animation was something that you had never done and was definitely going to be very different from any collab that you had this, this you know, 2021 collaboration year. Um, so that was, that was perfect. It was a perfect project for us to tackle. Yeah, and you do all your animation in Photoshop, which I think um, there might be a handful of folks that watch this that know that process and how time intensive that is. Um, but do you have a sense? Uh, I mean, I know that you use Photoshop because that's what you're comfortable with. Um, but do you yeah. think that makes your job a little bit harder or or not just because that's the, the software you, you wanted to use? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Is the process uh, harder? Potentially. Um, first of all, there's there's so many programs out there that um, intermediate or novice animators might use. There's like Toon Boom, there's Procreate, um, can work in Photoshop, there's uh, TV Paint. There's so many different programs. 
Um, but I chose Photoshop strictly because like I knew it so well. Mm -hmm. I knew what I, I'd be able to do. There was going to be like the smallest learning curve and I would just be able to jump in and start making things visually. Mm -hmm. uh, I've definitely learned a couple new things uh, with the way that you can construct an animation in Photoshop. Um, and that'll have to be what I implement on the next project. Uh, but I was giving you, Amy, a bunch of like little tips and I made a quick little how to. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it's it's a process that you've been able to follow at least a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're, we just continue on and until until we have like a fully realized shot. Mm -hmm. Talking more about the f first film, you talked about it a little bit. Where did Rocky come from? Well, I've known Amy for 20 years. I've I've known Rocky, the character, in some way, shape, or form for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, the character started as just like this um, talk that I was having with my good friend Derek Lazo, um, who is the editor on the first and this upcoming film. And uh, it just came from this concept of... Uh, what goes what does a dog go through when it gets neutered <laughs> and it's not like such a silly concept but i felt like there were like these there were like so many stories that i could tell with that uh -huh. and uh, i began by just starting with the character design and starting with the concept and i would work on it on and off for the past 10 years and one of the things about uh, sheltering in place is that you're just like forced to do something yeah um yeah. And so with that, I created this that first short film. And with this the second piece, I knew that I wanted to take us into the story that I, I wanted to tell. Um, and so there are a number of things that I wanted to do. A, expand the universe a bit. B, get him from this location that we saw him in in the first film and then put him into this new neighborhood. And obviously, C, be able to tell like a cohesive story that uh, would resonate with people. Um, and so I felt that it was timely uh, to tell a story about adjusting to new change because that's that's what we're doing, aren't we? Yeah. Um, and so um, that that's how I came to, you know, to uh, put together a concept for this, and, uh, and hopefully it does well. Hopefully we can see it grow some, and um, you know, if if there are more. Uh, features of these characters that Amy has helped me with in the future, perhaps, you know, we'll be doing more work at that time. But let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this, um, this character design process. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when you got to see the animatic, the really early cut of this story, um, what, what was it that made you say, like, I'll design those dogs or, or, uh, um, I think, I think you're the one that came up with that because I wasn't sure, you know, I've never seen an animatic in my life. <laughs> and maybe this is a good time in the video. I'll drop, drop that in. I, I didn't really have a sense of what you needed, knowing how many collaborators you have on this project. Um, and all the puzzle pieces that a variety of people are doing. Um, I think you, you must have been the one that said the idea for the, the dog character designs, which just goes to show how much, how well you know me. I mean, that is the knowing the other pieces that you needed, like the environments and all that stuff, like dog characters was the one that I would have. <laughs> yeah. jumped right into if I had an option. I so, mean, Amy, Amy, you have a long, long history of obviously a lot of um, uh, animal character drawings. You know, obviously, I know, you know, you, you've drawn many, many a lion and whatnot in, in your career. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lion and its anatomy can, come, you know, at least transfer a little bit over to, to a dog type character. So. For sure. The body's basically the same. It's just the face that's different. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a new do. Yeah. yeah. New colors. You needed four dogs because there's an old pack and a new pack. So I illustrated the old pack. Maybe illustrating the new one. Don't know yet. That's up to you. 
Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was fun coming up with the look of them, the feel of them. Obviously, I had to base them off of Rocky a, a little bit just so that they fit in the same world together. Uh, but yeah, it was fun coming up with their personalities and their little quirks, all that stuff. Yeah, I think that's one of the the, the best things about like um, documenting this this type of process is uh, we we forget the work that goes into something as simple as that, right? We we see a character on a screen and we're just like, oh, somebody had to draw that, but it's like somebody had to come up with that idea and base it off of uh, some form of reality so that we could have a have a, a realization of like, okay, that dog could exist in your life. And so at the beginning, uh, the dogs were just like a brief sketch. I had done no design on them whatsoever. I had chosen uh, uh, a selection of dogs that I would like for his old pack to be. Mm -hmm. And that's where you jumped in, Amy, and you're like, okay, well, I'll, I'll make a list of them and then I'll look them up. And it was, it was interesting to see uh, your your process because you actually took um you took uh, a more realistic approach to kind of see like how do these dogs like actually look like and how do i make them into like a two-dimensional form and we we took steps to get it towards like this more animated tune like um proportions mm -hmm. yeah and it's funny because every time i look at an animation now i think about you know, in in a real life movie, all you need is extras, right? Just hire people, have them walking around in the background, do like little menial tasks. Yeah. But with an animation, you have, yeah, you have to think about what every single thing in that frame needs to look like, what they need to be doing, and then you have to animate it. Um, so yeah, I was watching, I was watching Moana the other day with with Olivia because she watches it every day. <laughs> Uh, and I just, you know, all the, all the musical numbers where they all of a sudden have like 30 more Islanders <laughs> involved on screen or in the frame that like all 30 of those had to have, had to go through this process, right? Of like, oh, maybe this is their personality and they need to be wearing this and they need to, you know, so yeah, I, it was yeah. so much work, so much work. Props, props to you, Disney animators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'd like to go as far to say that uh, not only did I feel like this was such a great uh, collaborative position for you, I also felt that you would bring to uh, the project something that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Um, if I had designed these dogs. I would have. Um, mm -hmm. They would have landed somewhere in the realm of the way that they look now. But um, I think that they would have been, they, they would have had less personality, less character, and I would have had less of a priority for them because of all the other things that I, I, I'm focusing on. Right. And with Amy, uh, she was able to just spend time with them to give them some personality give them names, give them these quirks, give them these traits. And uh, even if they're in the film for, you know, one shot, those things are important because A, uh, it, it better informs me so that I can play off that. Mm -hmm. And and also it opens up the possibility that they can have a larger role in the future, right? Uh, which they just wouldn't have if I had, if it had been up to my device, I would have been like, all right, I, I drew those dogs. They, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, um, you know, I'd like to let you take over in terms of like how you went about designing them, and and let's look at some of uh, how they currently look like, which is I think they're pretty much in their finishing stages. Like you said, I googled the actual breed just so that I can. I know I feel like you go to art school and realism is still drilled into my head a little bit, so. Yeah. This was all, this was kind of a process for me of like undrilling it a little bit. I, I think that I still struggle with cartooning things because I still hear, I won't name names, uh, but I still hear certain drawing teachers like, nope, you get every single change in the angle. You have to like pay attention to those things. And it's been hard, not hard, but 
long term. It's like retraining yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think definitely, and maybe in this video, I'm, I, I want to show the progression of like the first doodle sketch that I did and then like where we landed. There was too too many details and something that you said in one of our like earlier meetings was like it, it, you know to animate this and to keep every single one of those little tufts of fur in the like right place <laughs> is just impossible yeah. i mean at least in this time frame with with your manpower simplifying everything i think that conversation we had where we we thought about dogs as more shapes than yeah. actual like furry lovable creatures um i think that helped me simplify a little bit uh and then just you know have to keep the snowball rolling all right so i got to work with amy scheidegger on this collaboration we're doing for character designing of some dogs that are going to appear in my next short another pack and she got to see some of my character designs of some of the characters that appear much later in the film um, but to basically see my design process um, for this world of dogs um, which were initially inspired by rocky and how they would look like in that world and i gave her a list of dogs which she took inspiration from and put into her style and we just did a nice little uh, review session and this is what she initially came up with we talked about how uh, in the design process we were going to focus on seeing the dogs in a simplified shape you know I went in and I, I talked about suggested edits bringing them down in their height by a bit um, we talked about eye shapes you know, simplifying them, going from maybe a more realistic look like we've got here on these guys and then going in and just kind of like making them a very simple uh, orb shape. Um, we talked about lots of things like possible different necklaces and attire. And then just about really seeing the dogs um, mainly as a silhouette. I think that's really great in terms of character design is being able to look at a character and almost be able to identify them just from the shape alone so we've got you know these guys here and uh i, I was kind of chuckling because like this this dog here i felt like when you break down his shape he almost has like a, a darth vader helmet type of look right um my, my favorites were definitely like this this guy here is almost like a like an elongated snowman or something like that but it was really distinctive in the lineup of all the dogs um, and this this bulldog here is just like he's barrel chested just sits most of the time maybe he's older lazier um, he had so much character um, so it was a great meeting we talked about like simplifying some of the fur um, again just making sure we can really see an identifiable silhouette um, I talked about how like I really could see each one of my characters and how I saw their their silhouette and their shape when I was designing you know this this guy here is a Shih Tzu I was like he's gonna be a peanut made him a peanut shape this guy maybe is like a taller elongated like 
uh, what do you call it, pot of peas or something like that. Um, this dog is a Yukashin Laika, that's a German dog. Uh, no, he's a Russian dog. Um, and even though the dog doesn't necessarily look like this specifically, I wanted him to be like a tic-tac shape or like this little like pill form. And that's what, you know, the main uh, starting point with him was. And finally, we got this Kerry Blue Terrier, who I knew needed to be very similar to Rocky in terms of his his shapes and his look, because they're kind of, they're one of the main uh, stars in the next one. They're probably who we're going to spend the most time with in the next one, these guys here. So I was talking to Amy all about that, about some of the little character defining uh, details that we'll see in each, but this was an amazing start. I'm really stoked to see what she comes up with next. These dogs are only going to show up in a couple seconds of this animation, but a lot of the workload beforehand is just trying to get this like really simplified version of this particular breed, which has turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's always great. And I, that's why I really appreciate you doing this type of series because, uh, you know, if, if we're not challenging ourselves as artists in some way, it, your growth is stagnant, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways to do it is just to like throw yourself into something. Yeah. And that's definitely yeah. what you did here, right? Um, it, it was really cool because, uh, again, I think you, you bring something to it that, you know, as I said, I just wouldn't have been high up on my priority list. Mm -hmm. And and I think, you know, again, it's one shot, but I think when you look at these characters, they don't come off as any type of throwaway, you know. Um, the, the moment in the film is actually pretty poignant, you know. He, he's going to be very sentimental. And if I had done it and made them look a little more generic, you know, uh, visually you would just be like okay that's that's, that's generic that, that's generic and that's those are throwaways mm -hmm. um i think with the way that you've designed them and given them some personality um it almost uh it, it almost pushes the viewer to to, to want to see more right away to be like oh i i barely even got to see them you know mm -hmm. that's that's where we, we you know we've done all the design work now and now it's about giving them that personality through the animation. That, is, mm -hmm. that in itself is the next step in the design process.
Expression can show a little bit of a personality, but I feel like movement is personality times 10, right? Um, so like a little, you know, one little movement from one of these dogs can show what they're all about. Yeah, it's great because, you know, you know, I'm sure the viewers will be able to see some of your, your drawings of, of the process. And even though, you know, uh, we don't see some of the expressions, you know, I had talked about Hey, I mean, give give me like two or three expressions of 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 what of how they would look when they make like a surprised face or an angry face. Mm -hmm. We don't catch that in the animation whatsoever. Right. But I I know that at least for me that better informs me of uh, of how they look in a certain situation. So. Do you want to share any images or um, we Ooh. had um you had a little video that you sent? Uh, yeah. A little clip. <laughs> All right. So I'm pulling up this image, which is what you just recently sent me, Amy. Um, I had covered earlier a quick little, here's how I simplified uh, further and, and fit it more into the style of um, another pack based off your drawings. And you have done the final line work here with the colors. Um, and they look great. You know, they... 100% look like they fit into this world. Uh, they, they're completely realized. Um, I, I colored in this his little neck, uh, oh, what, his collar there. Yeah, with, with gray. Um, we got Otis. I, I really like Otis, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely uh, I definitely feel he's, like he's got like so much character just sitting there. He's got like so much character. Um, but yeah. You've gone in and you've given the color and now they really have a life. I mean, I feel that most people looking at this would just assume that there's countless stories mm -hmm. of, of these characters. Um, and that, that's kind of like what you want to have sometimes when, when you want to give them this, this very sentimental uh, feel. Uh, again, like I, I, I now, because of the work that you've put in, I can imagine them being featured in the future because I, I, I've gotten to know them. Mm -hmm. um, so you've done a great job with the coloring here. Um, they've got like this very flat, uh, people refer to it sometimes as a cell shaded look. Mm -hmm. um, mostly just a solid tone with shadows. And um, I, I, love, I love the shape that these characters have. Um, I remember early on, I'm just going to do a quick sketch on here. Uh, one of the things that I really was stressing was that in the design process, you know, there's there's one way to go about it in terms of making sure that we can very quickly identify a character. And one way that, that that's done is just by focusing on a generic shape, right? So uh, who do we have here? Let's, let's start with Walt is a border collie, right? Mm -hmm. And so I... 
I, I loved how Amy created like this shape. I, I refer to like Walt's head as like a Darth Vader Darth helmet. Vader. Yeah. And then, you know, you can kind of see it mm -hmm. with this shape here. And, you know, it was great to be able to keep that. And so when we break down the character, you know, I was telling you like, we can just focus on these characters just as simple shapes. And we're able to kind of keep that consistent, which is, uh, which is really cool. You know, and also when we go into the animation process, it's it's easy for me to just be able to think of them as shapes as well and start to like lay them out mm -hmm. as such. Do you personally have a favorite one, Amy? <laughs> Who, who's the one you get along with? Who's the one I get along with? I'm drawn to Walt, the, the border collie. Um, I think he just has a, again, the shape of his face, I think is so different from the other ones that like, uh, and, and, and yeah. he, he sort of leans a little bit more Rocky esque. He's petite. He has the yeah. like fur coming out from his, the sides of his face. And there, there's just something about his like little nose and mouth, like his little muzzle that I find very cute. I do too. Yeah. yeah. It, this, this guy could definitely be, uh, he could have his own series for sure. Yeah. But I could see kids to get that one specifically. Yeah. Tune in to part two next week. <laughs> part two.